Okay. Good morning. Greetings to you in the name of the Lord on this Trinity Sunday. I guess I should have said in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. It's good to see you all and glad that you are here with us. If you would, please sign the attendance register, pass that along to others in your pew. Also want to welcome those of you who are joining us via the internet on uh, Facebook and YouTube. Uh, it's good to see you as well. And uh, just want to, want to add, or we're not seeing you, you're seeing us, but glad that you are joining us and uh, hope that we will see you live and in person. Uh, the book of Hebrews tells us that we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. And so uh, if you are, uh, whether you're a member of this church or not, uh, if you're watching, we hope that you will be uh, personally in attendance uh, here or in whatever congregation uh, you are affiliated with. Um, it's safe, at least it is here. So we hope that we will see you soon. Uh, while you're filling out the attendance register, just a couple of things to mention. One is uh, that the deacons are meeting this Tuesday. Uh, the primary reason I mentioned that is the 14th seems kind of late in the month, but, uh, but it's the second Tuesday. So deacons, you'll be meeting 6.30 on, uh, on Tuesday. Um, also, I uh, wanted to mention that uh, um, I will be going to uh, General Assembly, uh, which is being held in Michigan this year on uh, 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 next week. And so if you have uh, pastoral needs that, that, uh, that you need to have met, uh, please give one of the ruling elders a call. Um, this is not out of the country, obviously, so I can come back, but it would not be, it would not be convenient to do so. So uh, the circumstances under which I, I would do so are fairly limited, but I will come back if need be. But, uh, but first, contact one of the ruling elders and they will be happy to do whatever they can for you. Also want to mention that, um, that uh, VBS is coming up uh, July 13th, that's a Wednesday, from nine until three. And registration is open. Uh, if you know anyone, uh, if you've got any children, please give the, give the, uh, hmm? <laughs> please give the church a call. Oh, okay. Well, uh, don't, um, uh, don't ignore what I just said, it was all true. <laughs> but there's obviously more. Mark just asked me if I needed a stool. I think that was rude. Okay. I don't always prepare Pastor David well for my announcement, so I'm sorry about that. Um, but he is accurate. July 13th, 9 to 3. Um, I think I've just secured one more registration worker, so that's great. I'm going to need some people who can decorate, okay? Um, we've got four Bible stories that we would like to kind of illustrate in each room. And so if you are able, if you're crafty and everything, you don't even have to show up the day of VBS, but if you could come the Sunday afternoon before or the Monday or the Tuesday before the Wednesday that we have VBS to help decorate, that would be awesome. Um, also, we have a meeting coming up Saturday. If you're willing to help decorate or if you're working in any area of VBS, please come this Saturday at 10 o'clock to the church and we will meet here and kind of go through the classrooms and be more specific about what everybody's doing. Um, we also could really use some donations. 
there's not, as far as I understand, there's not like a line item for VBS on our budget. People have just been very generous in the past and we haven't had to have it. Um, we are feeding the kids lunch because it's nine to three. So we will need money for the food. We are also, um, I'm very excited about this. We are going to give each child that comes their very own real Bible. And so that is something that we are also paying for. They're about like two bucks a piece. They're not expensive, but we're buying at least 50 of them. And they're also gonna have a little workbook that they carry around that, you know, um, so a tote bag might be something that we purchase as well so that they can have that. So those are just some of the things that we are going to need. Um, funding for. So if you uh, want to donate in any way, you can put it in the offering envelope marked to VBS, um, take it to the church office, however we need to do it, we'll get it to the right place and it'll go where it needs to go. So um, again, we have a meeting on the 18th, which is this Saturday here at the church at 10 o'clock. And um, we're going to need some decorators, we're going to need some donations, and we can always use workers. So if you feel like you would like to help and don't know where you'd like to help or have an idea, just tell me and we'll put you somewhere. So thank you very much. Oh, I also have a bunch of flyers. If anybody wants to hand out flyers or you have a place of business or some place that you frequent that would hang one up, come get one from me, okay? I've got a whole stack and we can make more. So there we are. Thank you. And, uh, uh, you know, with all the stuff that, that we need donations for, let's not forget uh, the uh, princely salary that um, Mandy is receiving for being BBS director. What? At zero? Oh, 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 well. Okay. Well, that's all I have. So let's worship the Lord. <laughs>
Good morning. Please stand with me for the call to worship. The call to worship this morning is from Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. May the Lord give strength to his people. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you that you do give us peace, that you do give us strength. God, that we can glory in your name because you are worthy. Today we come to worship you. We come to honor you. We come to glorify you. God, we, we invite you to this place. We invite you to send your Holy Spirit that it may that it may be among us, that it may be in us, that it may draw us to you, that it may reveal all truth to us. Father, that we may worship you as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we ask that in Christ's name. Amen. Let us join together in our opening hymn, number three, God our Father, we adore thee. God our Father, we adore thee, we thy children bless thy name, chosen. Uh... 
Well, I did it again, looked down and realized I was supposed to be up here. So you think I know because I'm the one that maintains the schedule. <laughs> Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, this opportunity to, to be in your house and your presence with, uh, with all of our, uh, all the members of, of your family. And we just thank you uh, for the beautiful weather we have. And um, it's going to be hot this week. And I, I, it's, it's awe inspiring sometimes to think and to see the, the seasons change and, and how drastically they change sometimes and how quickly and all of the, the wonders of, of this world that you created. And sometimes we don't, you know, we just get used to it. And we don't, uh, we, we don't really think about that and, and how you put everything together to the Gulf stream and the, the weather patterns and the, the breezes and the water and the rain and the, all the different things, Lord, we don't we don't always uh, give you credit for for your creation. Forgive us for that and just make us help us to have that sense of wonder um, that in the midst of our daily lives and and the stresses of of work and the news and and raising families and all the different things, Lord, that take up our time, that we don't forget to stop and and just wonder father we uh, we thank you for your presence with us today we we know that we haven't done anything to deserve having you be here with us that you're here with us because you love us and we're 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 thankful for that and we ask that that you would continue to be with the members of our church that that are struggling with various health issues that uh, that are either ongoing or new whether they're recovering from surgery or or uh, or dealing with with something chronic whether they're at home or in a nursing home uh, we just pray that you would continue to be with each of them in the way that they need you know them you know their need you know the folks that are around them uh, to help them I pray that you would uh, you would bless each of them. Let them know uh, that we care about them. Help us to remind them of that, but also, Lord, let them sense your presence with them. And Lord, uh, we, we pray for our country. Lord, there's so much division, so much, so much pain, so much anger, and and just just horrible things that that we, we don't understand. Uh, sometimes how how they this can all be this way but we know that we live in a fallen world and it's not the world that you wanted us to have but Lord we just pray that you would uh, you would be with the, the, the people in power that Lord that they would know that their uh, their their position their power their their uh, what they have comes from you and they've been placed there whether we happen to agree with it or not, that they're there uh, because you ordained it. And we just pray that you would uh, give them wisdom. And, and, and if they, they're not seeking your face on a regular basis, that you would convict their hearts uh, that they should be. And, and if they're not believers at all and they're doing the opposite of what you would want them to do, that they wouldn't be there very much longer. We just pray that you would be with all of the folks, Lord, in this country that are suffering because of financial hardships, that are dealing with the aftermath of COVID, that are dealing with unemployment, or, or uh, they're just the just the fact that everything is getting more expensive. I pray that you would help us to meet needs where we find out about them individually. That you would help us to take care of each other as you command us to do that we would look after the widows and orphans and those in prison and those in the hospital and those that are homebound, that we would be your people. Father, I, I thank you once again for the opportunity to be here. I ask that you'd be with Pastor David this morning as he, uh, as he brings us your message, that your message would be 
challenging to us, that it would be encouraging where it needs to encourage, and that uh, it would bring us closer to you. And Lord, right now I pray the prayer that, that uh, Jesus taught the disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As a people blessed by God, we have the opportunity to say thank you. We do so now through the presentation of our tithes and offerings.
Let us pray. Holy Spirit, it is because of your ministry in each of our hearts, bringing us to faith in Jesus Christ, that we are here this morning. We give thanks to you, even as we give thanks to the Lord for his death and resurrection, even as we give thanks to the Father for sending his Son, and his Spirit to effect our salvation. We bring these gifts to express our gratitude, and we ask that you would use them both, the gift and the giver, for the purposes of your kingdom, for the spread of your word, for the offering of your love, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. The epistle lesson this morning is from Romans chapter 5. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. The word of the Lord. Please stand as you're able for our second hymn, number six, Holy Father, Great Creator.
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John, chapter 17, verses 20, verses 13 through 23. But now, Jesus said, I am coming to you, that these things I speak in the world, that they meet... Let me start this again. Jesus said, but now I am coming to you, and these things... I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate myself, that they also may be sanctified in truth. I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they may also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one even as we are one. I in them and you in me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you sent me and loved them even as you loved me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. As difficult as it is for us to make the idea of the Trinity fit our logic, it's nevertheless at the heart of our confession because it has to do with who the God that we worship is. Our confession is this, that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is identical to the God whom we meet in Jesus Christ, and that the God who raised Jesus from the dead is the same God who lives in us, whom we name and whom he names the Holy Spirit. Put it together, and it comes out this way. We believe that God is one God, and that at the same time, three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We can't make that make logical sense, because the one who created and redeemed and rules the universe is beyond the scope of our logic or of our ability to explain him. But we know, we know, because he has revealed himself to be, that he is one and he is three. And that in turn has a wide variety of implications. The truth of the matter is that the, the uh, the last 1,700 years of Christian theology has been primarily about working out what that is about how that affects who we are and what we are called to do and how God relates to the world. But for today, I'd like for us to take a look at just just one element of that. The God whom we call Trinity is a God of mission and therefore he is a sending God. There's a reason for that. The reason that God is a missionary God stems from the love of the persons of the Trinity for one another. Here's what I mean by that. The Father, obviously, loves the Son. Uh, I'm going to be using not just the passage that was read, but uh, I'm going to be all over the Gospel of John this morning and focusing on that because John above above every other book in the New Testament 
uh, is, is about Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so the Father uh, loves the Son as Jesus told his disciples. The Father loved, in uh, chapter 3, verse 35, the Father loves the Son and has given all things into his hand. It's not much, can't get much clearer than that. God loves the Father, loves the Son. Another from chapter 5, verse 20. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all that he himself is doing. And greater things than these will he show him so that you may marvel. Once again, the focus is on the fact that the Father and the Son have a bond between them uh, that, that truly is a bond of love. Chapter 10, uh, verse 17, uh, Jesus says, for this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. That doesn't mean the Father wouldn't love him if he didn't carry out his mission in the world, but that's yet another of the infinite number of reasons that the Father loves the Son. And in chapter 17, in the midst of his high priestly prayer, Jesus prays this, beginning with verse 24, Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, speaking of his disciples, may be with me where I am, to see my glory that you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. And it's interesting, isn't it? This is Jesus, a man born in a particular time, born in a particular place, finite in being. And yet he says, Father, you have loved me since the foundation of the world. And that's partially a reference to the fact that he loves all of us since the foundation of the world, even before we were a gleam in our mother's eyes, as the old expression goes, he knew us, he knew who we would be, and he loved us. And in fact, he chose us as his since the found, from the foundation of the world, as Ephesians chapter 1 says. But even more than that, even before the foundation of the world, God loved his son because they were together, one God, father and son bound together in, in, in an eternal bond of love. And it doesn't just go one way. Of course, Jesus's love for his father comes through, uh, not only all through this gospel, but all, all through all four of them. Everything that he does, he does for the father. His obedience is because of his love for the father. His preaching is because of his love for the father. Uh, his, 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 his death, his sacrifice is because of his love for, the, for his father. He makes it explicit in chapter 14, verse 31, where he, where he says, I do as the father has commanded me so that the world may know that I love the father. That's, a, that's a, 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 an echo, it's not even an echo, it's almost a, an exact restatement with different pronouns of the way he refers to us. And he says, if you love me, then you will do my commands. You will carry out my commandments if you love me. Yes, that's exactly what we're supposed to do. And that is what he does. He follows the commands of the Father in order that the world would know that he loves him. Now, the love of the Father and the Son for the Spirit is not spoken of directly in the New Testament, but it's plainly obvious. They're part of one God, and if the bond between the Father and the Son uh, is the bond of love, then obviously it would be with the Spirit as well. Uh, he was speculating in saying this, but I think there's something to uh, what, uh, what the great African Bishop Augustine said when he said that the spirit is the embodiment of the love between the father and the son. 
not in any way denying his own personality, but nevertheless making clear that, that the bond between the father and the son is itself bonded to the third person of the Trinity. Now, all of that being said, the father loves the son, the, lo the son loves the spirit, the spirit loves the father, uh, a great circle of love. And the wonderful thing, the reason that we are here, and by that, I don't just mean the reason we're here, but the reason why any of this is here, why anyone or anything is here, is because the love that the persons of the Trinity have for one another is love that overflows into creation and into humanity. Jesus puts it this way in chapter 14, verse 21. He says, whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Our, his love for us is every bit as real as his love for his own son. He loves us as members of his own family. In chapter 15, verse 9, he puts it this way, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you you. Because the Father has loved me, I love you as well. Because my parents love one another, I can know that I am loved. Unfortunately, that's not always a human reality. But the truth is that for children who know that they are genuinely loved by their parents, they know that the love of their parents for one another has a lot to do with that. I've seen that even in, in, even in parents who have divorced. Their children, knowing that both of their parents love them, know that regardless of what, what problems they might have, that their parents do love one another, even if they're not able to remain married. Well, of course, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, they don't have those kinds of issues. And so the love that they have for one another naturally overflows to God's children, and that is us. So the love that the persons of the Trinity have for one another spills out into the entire world. The love that God has is so overwhelming, it has to express itself even beyond the persons. The result was the creation of the universe, which God made in order to have something beyond himself to love and to cherish and to nurture. And even after the fall, he continued to love creation and he continued to, to love the, the highest of his creations that caused the whole thing to fall. He continued to. And because, because he loved us, he didn't leave us be. He didn't, he didn't leave us to our own devices. Uh, you all have perhaps heard of in the course of, I don't know, maybe an American history class back in, in high school or in college, uh, heard of deism, uh, supposedly the, the, the motivating religion of a lot of the American founders. I'm not gonna get into that argument, but deism was a real thing. And what deism said basically was that God created the world and then stepped back to see what would happen. It was almost like a big experiment. Uh, he was sometimes referred to as the great watchmaker. He made the watch 
Now he lets it run on his own, on its own, and he doesn't interfere with it because there's no, no need to interfere with it. <laughs> well, we all know <laughs> that there is, in fact, a need to interfere with it because not only is the watch not pro telling proper time, the watch is running backwards and occasionally stopping and occasionally jumping ahead and in every way, shape, or form not, not working the way it's supposed to. And so God doesn't just sit back and watch his creation and watch those who have been made in his image stumble through the world as best we can. He comes to us. He comes to us. If you go all the way back to the book of Genesis and you read the story of Abram, who later became Abraham, one of the very first things that you notice is that Abram wasn't looking for him. Um, in chapter 12 of the book of Genesis, verse 1, out of nowhere, he's not previously been mentioned. Uh, we've had the story of creation. We've had the fall. We've had Noah. We've had the Tower of Babel. Uh, Cain and Abel and so on. And then in verse 12, verse one of chapter 12, now the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you, etc." Where'd that come from? Had, had Abram been looking in the corners of his house trying to find God? No, of course not. God came to him. Abram wouldn't have had any clue. He had not the slightest inkling that there might be someone who wanted to speak to him and use him. And so he told, he told Abram that, that, uh, that he was going to go to, to the land that he would show him. I'll make of you a great nation and I'll bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. I will, and him who dishonors you, I will curse. And in all the families of the earth and in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. What an incredible, incredible honor given to someone who was completely oblivious completely clueless. And God comes to him and says, this is what I'm going to do for the entire world through you. The story of the Old Testament is the story of God's coming to the world, coming to the world through Israel, being made known by Israel, not consistently, not particularly well, really badly at times. Nevertheless, we read the stories of God coming to the Egyptians, letting them know who is, in fact, the God of gods and the King of kings. And here's a hint. It's not Horus or Isis, and it's certainly not the Pharaoh. So we get the story of Jonah going to the Assyrians in Nineveh and proclaiming their sin and letting them know of the condemnation that they brought down upon themselves. And what do they do? They repent. And they turn to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in fasting and dust and ashes. And they ask for his forgiveness. Why? Because the Assyrians wanted to cover all their bases? No. It's because God went to them in the form of Jonah. And why did he go to them after all the, the terrible things that they had done to his people? Because even then, he loved them. Even then, he wanted them for himself. And then, of course, the story culminates with the sending of Jesus. Jesus does not just turn up in the world by happenstance. This was not a random 
uh, conglomeration com coming together of sperm and egg and genetic material and boom, Jesus was formed. This was a deliberate plan using specific materials and it was God's own action to come into the world to send his son, the son whom the father loves and to work for the salvation of those whom he loves through him. To go back to the Gospel of John, the first reference to, uh, to uh, Jesus being sent is, is uh, found in chapter 3 in verse 34. Uh, this is the chapter in which Jesus has the conversation with Nicodemus uh, and tells him about the Holy Spirit. And in the midst of that conversation, he tells him this, for he whom God has sent utters the words of God, for he gives the spirit without measure. There's the Trinity again, and there's the sending. Jesus talks about being sent a lot. He wants them to make clear this is not simply a religious mission that he, he came up with on his own. He looked at the state of Israel uh, or, or the condition of Israel, both spiritual and, and temporal. And he said, you know, these people really need help. And so at the age of 30, he decided he'd hit the road and he'd start preaching and healing and doing all that good stuff. And, and, and eventually, uh, eventually Israel would come back to God. That's not the way it worked. I'm not going to read through all of these. We'd be here for a while. But here are the references to Jesus being sent, all from John 4, verse 34, chapter 5, verses 23 and 24, 30, 36 through 38, chapter 6, verse 29, 38 through 39, 44, 57, Chapter 7, verse 16, 8, verse 18, 29, 33. Chapter 8, verse 16, verses 16, 18, 26, 29, 42. Chapter 9, verses 4, 29, 38, 39, 43, 57. Chapter 11, verses, verse 42. Chapter 12, verse 44. Ver chapter 13, verse 20. Chapter 14, verse 24. Chapter 15, verse 21. Chapter 16, verse 5. Verse 17, verse 3. Verses 3, 8, and 18. Verses 21, 23, and 25. And then finally, after the resurrection, John adds his own coda to that, that Jesus had been sent into the world in John 20, verses 20, verse 21. I go through all of that, not because I like to uh, hear myself read off numbers. Uh, in fact, it's pretty boring, and I bet, I'll bet hardly anybody here, if anybody, wrote all those down. I went through those to give you an idea of how important this is. Jesus tells them over and over and over over again. And John also tells them, he was sent. He was sent. This is God reaching out to people who can't reach him. He did that through Jesus. And then, and then, once the mission of the son is finished, once he has died, once he has risen again, once he has ascended to the Father, what does he do? I'll give you one guess. What does Jesus do once he has ascended? He sends the Spirit. He doesn't rise to heaven, stand at the throne of the Father, and look at the Spirit, and the Spirit says, well, I guess somebody's got to get down there. So I reckon I'll do it. The Holy Spirit is sent, is sent to us because we cannot go to him. He is sent.
And because the Holy Spirit is sent out of love for those whom God has created, he sends us as well. In John 17, verses 13 through 23, Jesus prays very explicitly for us. That's right, Doc. Jesus is praying for you. Mark, Jesus is praying for you. Brooke, Jesus is praying for you. Have you, ever, have you ever thought about that before? Jesus is praying for you in this passage. He says, I do not ask for these only, being those who are with him at the time, but also for those who will believe in me through their word which all of us have done, that they may be one just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they may also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. So that when we go to the world, the world can see that even as God is one and yet three, he can see that we are one and yet many. And that even as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit love one another and hence come into the world to save those who cannot save themselves, we go into the world because we are sent to the world that those who cannot save themselves may be saved. And we do that not out of legalistic duty or because we get brownie points in heaven. We do it simply because we love them. The only reason God ever came to us, it's the only reason that we need to go to them. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you have come to us, that you did not wait around for what would never have happened, for us to turn to you. You've come to us and in the process you've made us yours. We ask that as you send us forth, that as you send us forth, you would go before, go before us even as you went before Israel in the wilderness to light the way, to show us the opportunities to Shed your light on those whom you are preparing to receive your word. And then, Father, we ask that you would give us the words and the actions and the attitudes of heart and mind that would call us or enable us to speak to them as, as you desire. Father, use us even as you send us, we pray for Christ's sake and in his holy name, amen. Please stand as you're able for our closing hymn number one, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty.
in three persons, blessed Trinity. Before the benediction, I've been wondering all all morning, what am I forgetting? Because I knew there was an announcement. I had forgotten and I couldn't remember what it was. And I finally realized uh, toward the end of my sermon what it was. Please don't forget, we have a, a lunch next Sunday uh, to honor uh, one, of the, one of the fathers of this congregation. And you all know how that works. Okay, it'll be after worship in the old in the uh, uh, the main street center. So please don't forget that. All right. And now, as you depart, receive this benediction from the Lord. May the God of all grace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who has made us children of His, that we might go forth, even as He has gone forth to save that which was lost. Go with us and be seen through us and work through us both now and forever. Amen. Amen.